just on mine. Well, you're, you, well, you're, you picked up the topic. Oh. Good person. <laughs> so, I was too prompt for you. everybody else. <laughs> okay. Got it. Which one? This um, meeting of the Oak Park City Council is called to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Clerk Norris, would you call the roll? Mayor McClellan. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Here. Council Member Burns. Here. Council Member Rich. Here. Council Member Weiss. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, before we approve the agenda, please add item 15E, which is a library update. And also, also, can we please move 7B to after 8D? Everyone, please move 7B to after 8. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Support. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next is the consent agenda, which is um, uh, routine items approved without discussion. Uh, council meeting minutes of April 30th, special council meeting minutes of May 7th, regular council meeting minutes of May 7th, parks and recreation commission meeting minutes of February 21 and March 21, Payment of invoices from OHM advisors for the Seneca and Sherman Pocket Parks. Travel sig signal optimization, saw grant support, bridge enhancements, and nine mile road tap grant design. In the total amount of $52,352.86. And finally, licenses new and renewals is submitted for May 16th, 2018. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Okay. Um, item seven. There is a tribute and a moment of silence in memory of Oak Park Public <coughs> Safety Officer Henry Wolf, who was shot and killed in the line of duty, May twenty first, nineteen seventy three, and uh, Director Cooper will speak to us. Good evening to our mayor, our mayor pro tem council, city manager, attorneys. Uh, this evening I come before you along with some of our public safety officers and also present I have the member of our 2018 uh, Citizens, Spring Citizens Academy here with us to honor our pledge and remembrance of Officer Henry Wolf. May 21st will mark the 45th anniversary of the death of public safety officer Henry Wolf, who was killed in the line of duty on May 21st, 1973. Although none of the current members of the Public Safety Department had the pleasure of personally knowing Officer Wolf, 
We stand together as one, honoring his service to this great city. Henry Wolf joined the Oak Park Public Safety Department on April 1st, 1968, shortly after he married his wife, Linda. His daughter, Laura, was born the following year. Officer Wolf was highly regarded and respected by his fellow officers. During his five-year career with the department, he earned several citations and commendations, including the citation for valor, which was awarded posthumously. At 7.30 a.m. on May 21st, 1973, Officer Wolf made a traffic stop at Sherman and Northfield. Officer Wolf was unaware that the two occupants of the vehicle had just been involved in a shooting incident in Royal Oak. As Officer Wolf approached the car, the passenger produced a gun. As Officer Wolf struggled with the passenger, the driver took Officer Wolf's gun from his holster and fired a fatal shot to the back of Officer Wolf. The two suspects attempted to flee the scene while exchanging gunfire with an Oak Park officer who was arriving to assist. The suspects were later apprehended, tried, and convicted. Both men are still serving life sentences for the murder of Officer Wolf. At the age of 27, with five years of service, Officer Henry Wolf made the ultimate sacrifice, leaving behind his wife and four-year-old daughter. Each day, when the men and women of this fine department don the uniform badge and head out into this community to protect and serve, we are, ever, we are ever mindful of the fact that we too may be called to make the ultimate sacrifice. Yet without hesitation, we proudly serve. Out of respect and gratitude to Officer Henry Wolf for the sacrifice that he made, we have gathered on this 16th day of May, 2018, to honor his service, sacrifice, and bravery. Pause for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Um, thank you. Last year at this time, I was in Washington, D.C. Um, Yesterday was the National Peace Officers Memorial Day. Uh, it's an it's a international uh, holiday honoring officers who died in the line of duty. And there were people from police officers from England and Australia and everywhere you could think of. It was very moving. So I'd like to thank the members of the class who are here tonight. Thank you so much for coming. We're delighted to have you. Thank you, Mayor. And like I said, they, they, if it's okay, we'll go ahead and dismiss them. Yes. They, they were right in the middle of class, and they—it's uh, <laughs> upside down. They were kind enough to come in and uh, share in this moment of silence with us. Thank you. They're doing a great job as well, and they look yes, great. Yes, it's a wonderful. If you haven't done it yet, uh, you can ask these people. It's a wonderful experience. Fascinating. Gives you a huge regard for what our public safety officers do for us. Next, we have the annual budget presentation, City Manager Eric Tungay. Okay, good evening, council members and members of our public, city attorney, city clerk, members of the staff. Um, I'm going to be very brief, but I have the distinction every single year of presenting the city's budget. And I think everybody in Oak Park knows that we do a three-year budget in the city of Oak Park as of just a few years ago. So the first year, um, which is next year for us, which begins July 1st, is fiscal year 2018-2019. And then we do two years of projected budgets for 1920 and 2021. So here is the, I'm not supposed to hold this up, but here's the budget book for those of you that haven't seen it yet. Copies will be made available to the general public after tonight's meeting as soon as it hopefully is approved. Um, council members, there are a couple of changes. The transmittal letter is, there, I've left copies of them on your, your spots. The transmittal letter will need to be replaced. Pages 51 and 52 and then pages 139 through 140. And you have those copies there. Um, so let me get started. So I'm gonna talk about three main things. And first, 
I talked about the three-year budget already, but I wanted to spend a little time on that. Uh, number two, the current economic climate. I want to make sure everybody understands what is happening uh, in our state and especially here in our city. And then the last thing I want to talk about is budget highlights, and then I'll leave it with a public hearing, of course, and then council can consider approval of the budget. So why do we do a three-year budget? Well, the modeling gives us uh, an opportunity for, to foresee things that we otherwise wouldn't be able to see. And when this concept, actually the mayor brought this concept up to me a few years ago, and when she first brought it up to me, I said, eh, I don't know that we want to get ourselves into that. And I've since changed my tune a little bit. I think it works for us. Uh, and I mentioned it includes those three years. Um, we expect, after all is said and done, in the general fund of the city for fiscal year 1819, we expect to have a small surplus. Now, this will be our third straight year of a budget surplus, and I'm very proud of that, and also our third straight year of lower taxes. Very proud of that, too. And this means, you know, obviously we're keeping our costs in line, and our conservative budgeting approach related to revenue is outpacing our forecasts. So what is the current economic climate? Well, I've said this to I'm blue in the face, and I'll say it again. Since 2002, the state of Michigan, under both Republican and Democrat governors, have taken away uh, statutory revenue sharing from the city of Oak Park. For us, in those years, since 2002, that amounts to about $22 million. We could have used that $22 million. What did the state do with it? They're using it to balance their own budget. In fact, today in the Detroit Free Press, we see an article that the state has a huge 300-some million dollar surplus, and they're trying to decide what to do with it. Well, I know exactly what they can do with it. Yeah. You, you think about what I was going to say there. Um, statewide, that's about $7.5 billion, with a B, billion dollars over those same years. To the city of Detroit, that's over a billion, with a B, dollars in those same years. Those are big numbers. And then legacy costs in the form of retiree health care and our pension obligation costs are, generally speaking, especially retiree health care, increasing at more than the rate of inflation. The rate of inflation is between 2 and 3 percent, market rate of inflation. Our health care costs, both retiree and active health care costs, we're expecting them to increase about 8.7 percent. That is an unsustainable model, and it's something that the city of Oak Park has no control over. There is one group responsible, and that is the federal government. So think about that. We cannot control those costs. We simply have to deal with the aftermath of them. Public infrastructure is in dire need of repairs and maintenance. And everybody knows that the state of Michigan, I think if you drive around Metro Detroit, you know that the roads here are the worst in the country. And that's a fact. They're, we rank 50 out of 50 states in terms of how we provide funding for bridges and roads and, and uh, water and sewer, et cetera. Um, and then also, the city is still recovering from losing around 40 percent of its total taxable value as a result of the Great Recession. Bless you. The, now think about this. Property tax revenue makes up more than about, actually about 60 percent of our total revenue to the city government. If that is by far and away the largest portion of revenue that we get. So if I took that number and reduced it by 40 percent, if you were a private business, and I've said this before too, you would be out of business. We don't have that, uh, I want to say luxury, but we definitely don't have that tool at our disposal. We have to provide public safety services, water and sewer, et cetera, and so we've had to deal with that. And how have we dealt with that? Well, we found tons of cost savings. We had to put a millage on the books back in 2012 and so on and so forth. And because the state of Michigan Treasury Department sets the rate at which we can regain those property tax revenues lost at about, let's say, 1 percent, give or take, if we lost 40 percent and we can get 1 percent back a year, it's going to take us about 40 years or, or so to, to get back where we were. Now, your market value of your home is getting right back to where it was almost. Uh, across the board and almost every census tract now in the city of Oak Park, we are back to pre-recession uh, market values. But that is not the same as taxable values uh, in terms of how we collect revenue. 
So I, I wanted to put this chart up because I think, uh, hopefully you can see that, but you can see in 2009 through 2013, right there is that 40% that I just talked about. So we're getting it back, but ever so slowly. And by the way, these percentage increases here are, are overall. These are not in terms of what we can capture. These include new development and uncapped uh, taxable values and so forth. It's going to take us a while, needless to say. Um, I also want to take this opportunity. I know the mayor had asked me some questions about this, but I wanted to take this opportunity, and I don't want to get too deep in the weeds with this, but I do think it's worth mentioning that this, there's a state law, um, two of which, the Headley Amendment and Proposal A, which limit the growth of taxable value of existing property. So this means that even though property values have recovered from the Great Recession, the amount of tax revenue the city lost during that time will not be gained back in the near future. This is what I was just mentioning. Proposal A specifically limits the growth of taxable value on existing property to the rate of inflation or 5%, whichever is less. This means that if you've been in your home for a long period of time, and let's say your market value has skyrocketed, it means that we cannot capture taxes on that higher value. We can capture taxes on your existing value plus the rate of inflation or 5%, whichever is less. So here again, we're handicapped, so to speak. Um, and then when the property, as, as I mentioned a moment ago, if a property becomes uncapped, as it's called, which means it's sold for, let's say, a higher than current market value, the tendency would ben, then be that that property would tend towards the state equalized value, which shadows the market value, and we would be able to capture revenue on that higher value. So the good news, as you saw a moment ago in my chart, the 6% or so reflects that, because what that means is that we have a lot of people moving into our city. And we're seeing that in the census numbers. Millennials and seniors and others are moving into our city at a much faster clip than in years past. And that's good news. Um, I'm not going to get into the Headley rollback and all of this, but um, the state treasurer, I will say, um, announced last year the rate of inflation statewide would be 0.9%. And I'd like to see their formula. I don't understand them. Budget highlights. Let me get into this real briefly. We have in Oak Park, as countless other municipal organizations, county, local units of government, we have a structural imbalance, which means that revenues are not increasing at a high enough rate to offset ongoing costs and liabilities in the form of mostly legacy costs. And so here in Oak Park, we are, unlike some other communities, we are dealing with our structural imbalance and dealing with it through mostly cuts and changes trying to find a more efficient way to deliver services, more with less. And, you know, all of our revenue estimates assume the voters approve the renewal of Public Act 345, as well as a one mil Headley override for public safety purposes. And City Council in front of you here has decided to place both of these items on the primary ballot, which is coming up in this August. And it's very important, obviously, that uh, that revenue be gained and kept. It's a, these are renewals, straight renewals. These are not increases or new taxes. These are simply renewals. Um, another highlight, the water and sewer fund needs to be replenished to maintain our infrastructure properly. And let's be honest, we can only do this by a rate increase. Um, some of the rate increases we're talking about may shock some of you. We're talking about next year a 14.65% rate increase. Why would we, we be doing that? Because we have no choice. We are sold water from the Great Lakes Water Authority and we have to account for the increases they pass on to us, but then we also have to account for the increases for the cost of maintenance and repair and replenishment of this humongous water and sewer infrastructure system in our city. And so we need to make sure that we have enough funds to do that. Cost savings is another huge part of the budget, and City Council worked very diligently with me to make sure that we identified as many of these as we could. A citywide hiring freeze has been instituted. We are not hiring new people right now. All departments have been asked by me to reduce their budgets by 5% and a half. And health care benefits must be reduced or for retirees and active employees to avoid, avoid state oversight of our retirement systems under Public Act 202, which was approved last December. 
to reduce, reduce the risk of financial insolvency over the long term. This act says that if your pension system is less than 60% funded, then you may have to submit a plan of action to the state of Michigan, of which they have to approve. And if they don't approve, then they could institute whatever they want. On the retiree health care side, it says that you have to have your retiree health care system funded at least 40% or the same thing could happen. So we're in the process of delivering those estimates right now. We have a waiver application in for our pension systems and our retiree health care systems, and we will see where that goes. Um, the other thing that's a budget highlight, in my opinion, is that it's absolutely true that our economic development strategy is paying off. And I have people say to me all the time, you know, well, we've had economic development forever. Why is it only now that we're focused on it? We've never, we, we haven't had it forever. We've had it about four years. We did not have a single economic development staff member prior to that. And that was, in my opinion, that was to the great detriment of this city. Amen. We're one of the few cities of 30,000 or so that didn't have that. We now do. Kimberly Maroney is our director of that department, doing a wonderful job. We've seen the FedEx distribution facility. You know, we just, we're, we're hoping to land a brewery or two, you know, onward and upward. Um, things are definitely happening, and obviously that adds value to our overall taxable values that we can capture revenue from. Um, next, most capital projects that are vital to the rebirth and quality of life for residents of our city are moving forward. Most importantly, we are purchasing out of the general fund in next year's budget new ballistic vests for public safety, HD video cameras for the public safety vehicles. We're doing swimming pool renovations, albeit not total extremely expensive, but enough to maintain our pool the way we expect it to be, roof repairs at the community center, and library and other places. Um, you know, some of these are absolutely critical uh, to be done, because if we don't do them, then we start falling apart, okay? And then lastly, we are going to maintain, over the next three years, a very, very strong undesignated fund balance. And when I say undesignated fund balance, what I mean is this is our rainy day fund. This is the fund that we draw from if everything else fails. And I have a chart that I want to show you. This is where our, I don't know if you can, oh, you can see this, okay. So fiscal year 2012, by the way, this is where we started. Um, this is shortly after the mayor took office and I came here in 2012, and this is where we were. And actually, I would even challenge that because we had a bunch of Michigan tax tribunal measures that were being settled to the tune of about $900,000, that would have set this into the negative category. So at that time, we had no rainy day fund to guard against whatever may come our way. Compare that to what we're projecting for the next few years, and you can see that somewhere around 18, 19, 20% is, is pretty strong. Now, that's great news. That would allow us to operate for about a month and a half without any other assistance. So think about that. And when you compare us to our peer cities, Madison Heights and other cities similar in size and function and so forth, we're right on par with those other cities. In fact, when we do our annual Standard & Poor's rating call, they're not that impressed with our rainy day fund. Not as impressed as I am, that's for sure. Um, so we've got a long way to go here. So at this time, city council members, I'm asking for your approval of the fiscal year 2018-19 millage rates, as well as the annual budget and the fee schedule you have a copy of. And I also wanted to say thank you and open it up to questions, Madam Mayor, if you would like. Any questions? No, thank you. Thank you so much for the humongous amount of work this took to uh, do this and the hard decisions it took for staff members and uh, everyone. May I say one more thing? I neglected to, to thank our finance director, Sandra Crawford, our deputy finance director, Jamin Winters, Crystal McLean, Kevin Yee, Vicki Brooks, Steve Lukasek, uh, among other people, um, Karen Bryant, uh, you name it, who added into this very, very extensive process, which for those of you that don't know, this process for the city administration began back in February. So tonight, for us, is the end of a long journey that I'm very happy to say is over almost. I hope. But thank you very much, honestly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to open a public hearing to receive citizen comments just about this 2018-19 budget and property tax millage rates. 
the public hearing is open. Is there anyone here who is here to comment about the budget? No takers. Public hearing is closed. Next, I'll take a motion to approve the resolution adopting the fiscal year 2018-19 budget and millage rates and acknowledging the multi-year budget, including projections for fiscal years 2019-20 and 2020-21. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Um, is there a discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, next, we have a resolution adopting the fiscal year 2018-19 water, sewer, and garbage rates. Is there so, a motion to approve this resolution? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion or questions? Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Motion carried. Finally, resolution adopting the fiscal year 2018-19 fee schedule. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner. Yes. Motion carried. Um, this brings us back to item 7B, which is an employee recognition, City Manager Tungate. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I have the honor of acknowledging the hard work that Priscilla Laney, who's here tonight, I'm assuming with your family. Um, we're gonna get to know them in a minute, by the way. But I have the honor of acknowledging her great work here at the City of Oak Park. She actually started her career back in 1999, and I understand you started in the technical and planning department with him. I'm, ima I'm imagining this now. This is our director of technical and planning, Robert Barrett. In 2012, she joined the public safety department and took over as the property and evidence clerk, um, which is how I know you, because that's where you were when I was first here. Um, she's in charge of the entire public safety property room and evidence room. Uh, mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know, this is where we keep evidence regarding uh, criminal cases and so forth. She's, I, I don't know if I've ever seen her not smiling in her entire life. I'm, I'm, I don't think she's just putting me on either. I think she's actually that happy of a person and I'm very, very honored and proud to um, uh, have her here as one of our great employees. And I wanted to ask Director Cooper to come up and say a few words as well and then we're gonna bring all of you up and hopefully have a photo with you guys. But thank you for being here. All right, good evening again, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Uh, I wanted to thank the city manager for accepting my nomination of Priscilla Laney and uh, recognizing her as the employee of the month. I could not as well think of a more deserving uh, person for this award. Uh, during her six years with the Public Safety Department, uh, she has run our uh, property room without a flaw. Priscilla is extremely knowledgeable, hardworking, humble, uh, very unassuming. Priscilla, Priscilla literally is responsible for thousands of pieces of evidence and property. She has to make sure that each and every piece is accounted for 100% of the time. She operates in a stressful environment with a huge amount of responsibility. There are large amounts of cash, drugs, weapons secured in this area, evidence from the simplest crimes all the way up the chain to some of the most heinous crimes such as homicides, robberies, sexual assaults, etc. Priscilla is responsible for transporting evidence to the various crime labs, maintaining the chain of custody, which is crucial when cases are presented in court. She is also required uh, at various times to appear in court and give testimony on any number of cases. Uh, organization and security of the property room that house our evidence can be a very daunting task in and of itself. There are only a couple of staff members besides Priscilla that have access to the property room. The property room is under video surveillance 24 hours a day. Uh, and for transparency purpose, uh, even yours truly, the Director of Public Safety, does not have access to the property room. Hmm. The selection process for this position was extensive and intensive, to say the least. You may have heard some horror stories regarding other agencies where property and evidence have been mishandled, yeah. drugs and cash disappearing from property rooms, etc. We have never experienced any of these issues and I stand before you with absolute confidence in Priscilla. 
Priscilla has an excellent communication skills. She excels uh, in providing customer service. Uh, Priscilla has always represented the City of Oak Park and the Public Safety Department with the utmost professionalism. And again, I would just like to say that I could not think of a more deserving person of this honor than Priscilla Laney. So Priscilla, we are extremely fortunate to have you as an employee of the city, and I'm personally uh, delighted and honored to have you uh, on the uh, public safety team running our property room. So congratulations. <laughs> Okay. Item 10 is special licenses. We have a special license request submitted by First Baptist Church of Oak Park for their community outreach event to be held on June 16th, 2018. Is there a motion to approve this special event request? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. And if you take a look at the application. Uh -huh. We don't have anyone here tonight from them, do we? No, I don't think we do. Okay. But they have, they have uh, I've been to this event, and it is wonderful. They have community games, and a bounce house, and a fire truck, and food. And they also do some, um, a clothing drive for people who can use a hand, and it's just a lovely event. Mm -hmm. um, is there a mo so we have a motion, is there a discussion? No. Okay, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Next, um, accounting reports. Need approval for payment of an invoice submitted by Seacrest, Wardle, Lynch, Hampton, and Truex, and Morley for legal services in the amount of $625.20. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there support? Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilmember Weiss? Yes. Councilmember Burns? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Radner? 
Um, excuse me, Council Member Rich. Yes. Okay, motion carried. Uh, like a motion to approve payment of invoices submitted by Garen Luca Miller, PC, for legal services in the total amount of $14,701.99. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Councilmember Rich. Yes. Councilmember Weiss. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, on to item 12. Item 12 is a request to reward, award the bid for the 2018 Mechanics In-Ground Truck Lift Rebuild Project, M685, to Allied Incorporated of Ann Arbor, Michigan, for the total amount of $55,792. Is there a motion to award the bid? So moved. Second. And seconded. Um, is this, can someone speak to wh what this? Good evening. Mm -hmm. I'm here to answer any questions you have. Oh, just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what work is being done. Um, we have uh, an old lift in the mechanics garage that hasn't been functioning for several years. Um, we've had this in the budget for the last couple of years, and Dave DeCoster, deputy director, has come in and um, with a great amount of effort put in, got, got some bid specs together, um, and put everything together to, to put this out for bid. And... Um, this is the bid to repair that um, mechanics. Place. Finally get it fixed. Correct. Finally get it fixed. Any okay. questions? Yes. I uh, Just looking at the bid tabulation, I noticed that the other bid was considerably higher for pretty much every category. I didn't know if there was a reason for that or... I honestly couldn't tell you. We had uh, three different companies come out and look at it. Um, we put together the best bid specs we had based on what the you know, feedback that we got and our mechanics feedback on how we wanted it repaired and how we wanted it to function. These are the bid specs that we put together. I don't know why the other bidder was so much higher, but we're definitely confident that Allied can do the work and do it properly. And you've worked with them before? And they... um, well, actually, we haven't worked with them before. It is kind of a unique thing, but based on their um, references were checked and um, based on our conversations with them, we're confident that they can do okay. the work. Further? Uh, let's see, where are we now? Roll call. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Council Member Rich. Yes. Council Member Weiss. Yes. Council Member Burns. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, item B, um, request to re award the bid for the 2017 program year large yard services contract M686. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there support? Second. Um, discussion. Rob Barrett is here to uh, Director Barrett. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council, City Manager. Um, before you is a, a recommendation of award to uh, OSHA to administer our CDB, CDBG funds that are allocated for the Yard Services Program. Um, by teaming with OSHA, our seniors are, uh, get to leverage our CDBG um, funds with uh, the Great Rake uh, Refrigerator Replacement Program, uh, Area Aging on 1B funds, and um, Older Americans Act program. So we do get a lot more by utilizing OSHA. And they uh, have done a really great job in the past of uh, vetting out and proofing all of the seniors to make sure they're eligible for the CDBG funding. That's wonderful. And I know City Council doubled this from 15000 to 30000 because we have more seniors and people need some help. Correct. Terrific. Uh, so we have a, um, a discussion or questions for the director? No. Nope. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Council Member Rich. Yes. Council Member Weiss. Yes. Council Member Burns. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, now we have City Attorney um, resolution approving a Metro Act permit application submitted by Lightspeed Communications Limited. Um, is there a motion to approve the, revolution, the resolution? So moved. And seconded. Second. Okay. Can you um, explain a bit about this? Introduce yourself first. You're not our regular. 
Uh, my name is Courtney Krause. I'm from the City Attorney's Office, filling in for Ebony Duff tonight. Thank you. Last month, the city received an application by Light Speed Communications LLC for a Metro Act permit in the city for access to and ongoing use of public rights of way within the city for the purpose of installation of fiber optic cables to service residential and business customers. The legal department has undertaken a review of light speed communication submissions to ensure that they meet the statutory requirements of Public Act Number 48 of 2002, as well as the City of Oak Park Code of Ordinances, Chapter 71, regarding telecommunications services. The application states that light speed communications will install fiber optic cables through the use of existing conduit systems by attaching to utility poles where available or through the construction of new conduit systems when necessary. Underground conduits will be placed on the public right of way. Lightspeed Communications has also presented a certificate of insurance covering the proposed work, which names the city as an additional insured as required by state law and local ordinance. The permit is requested for a term of five years, which is also consistent with ordinance. Um, as the documents submitted by Lightspeed Communications comply with the statutory requirements, the City Attorney's Office is recommending approval of the application pending final review and approval by the Department of Technical and Planning. Wonderful discussion. Our uh, discussion or questions for the attorney? Yes. Um, I noticed that in the app, it says here that there is a route map as part of the application. Do we have any idea of how extensive that will be, like the, the work that, that they're doing? Um, it's set forth in the route map, and it is limited to public rights away. So it's, it's fairly limited, it's my understanding. Okay. Uh, any further? Ready to vote? Okay. Um, roll call, please. Councilmember Weiss? Yes. Councilmember Burns? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Councilmember Rich? Yes. Motion carries. We're now at the city manager portion um, of the evening. City Manager Tungay. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council, members of the public. 15A, I'd like to have our finance director, Sandra Crawford. As if, as if she hasn't done enough already, here she is to talk about 15A and B. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, tonight, what we have before you is at the Council meeting of April 16th, um, we adopted a special, well, Council adopted the special resolution number nine to confirm the role for um, delinquent water. And so basically, there was an exception made with the property at 2406 Oneida. And upon review by the water supervisor, Kevin Vandewall, uh, the property owner um, is to be removed from the special assessment district number 670 because the pending lien has been paid. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So this is the only one? For 15A, yes. Okay. That was removed and that needs to stay off. So um, a motion to receive and approve this exception. So moved. Support. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. For item 15B, I will ask that my colleague, Director Barrett, come up and speak to the property blight one. Okay. Good evening again. Uh, very similar uh, recommendations bef uh, before you is that at the Two previous or a previous council meeting, maybe two of them ago, we had a special assessment hearing, and we had five objections on uh, the blight uh, special assessments. I investigated all five, and I found no reason to remove them special from the special assessment role and give a recommendation to place them all uh, back on the special assessment role. Uh, further, I think two of the five have already paid their invoice. Uh, anyway, so there would only be three being placed in the special assessment role. Thank you. Um, I need a motion to receive and approve these exceptions. So moved. Second. Moved and supported. Questions? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, 15C, I'd like to have our Assistant City Manager and Director of Public Works, Kevin Yee, join me at the podium, please. Good evening. Thank you. Attached is proposed change order number one and payment application number three for the 2017 sewer and catch basin cleaning and TV inspection project, M673. The change order is an increase due to the addition of several sewer lines 
that were discovered that had not been previously cleaned nor maintained according to the city standards. The project is, this project is cleaning, um, cleaning and televising sewers shown on the attached map. The project is currently 99% complete. It is recommended that proposed change order number one for the 2017 sewer and catch basin cleaning and TV inspection project M673 to Taplin, or Taplin Group LLC of Kalamazoo, Michigan be approved for the amount of $1,923.49. It is further recommended that payment application number three for the same be approved for the total amount of $23,083.74. Funding is available in the water and sewer fund. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Um, so these sewer lines had been there, but it was discovered that they were missed in the... We didn't have them on our maps. So we discovered them through the process, and we cleaned and televised them. Huh. Thank you. Are all the sewer lines now on our maps? <laughs> well, we believe that we have most of them on there, but every once in a while you run into a situation where something has not been recorded or was not on a map. So there may be an upstream manhole or something like that that you discovered through, through this process that, you know, you have to clean. It's pretty rare at this point. We've gone through the city several times, but once in a while things happen and you discover something that you may not have caught before. city is famous for fabulous uh, um, maintenance of its uh, infrastructure. has been for decades. Uh, we have um, a motion. Yeah. We have a motion? Yeah. Yep, okay. Um, any discussion, questions? Roll call, please. Councilmember Weiss? Yes. Councilmember Burns? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Councilmember Rich? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, Assistant City Manager Yee, 15D, please. Attached is a proposal from OHM advisors to provide support to city staff to perform a manhole assessment and certification program, MACP, to complete a component of the wa wastewater asset management SAW grant as required by the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. A lot of acronyms there. But yeah. Based on the timeline for the final submission of the grant, we have requested support from OHM advisors field staff to assist with the inspection portion of the project. It is recommended that City Council approve the attached proposal from OHM advisors to provide support to city staff to perform MACPs as required by the MDEQ SAW grant for up to 400 manhole structures, which amounts to a not to exceed amount of $30,000 upon review of the City Attorney's Office. This assistance was not specifically budgeted. However, it is 90% reimbursed as part of the grant funding. Therefore, it is recommended that 30, the $30,000 for these field inspections be transferred from the Water and Sewer Fund balance for this expenditure to line item 592-16616-818.619. The city's portion will be $3,000 after the grant funding. Uh, is there a motion to approve this expenditure? So moved. Second. Supported. Um, Okay, so this is part of a SAW grant, and they are going to provide 90% of the funding. Do these um, uh, manhole covers need replacement? Do they wear out? Do they? So what, what this is, is it, it is an inspection of our manhole structures. Um, the SAW grant covers an inspection of 1,300 manholes as part of the grant. Um, the MDEQ is reimbursing us 90% for that. So it's not just the cover. It's, it's the not whole. just the cover. It's Got the entire it. structure. Got it. And there actually is a certification um, and a process to inspect the manholes, certify that they're in good condition or what the condition is of them, and um, um, analyze that. The whole SAW grant process is basically getting a good grasp of your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And we already do a lot of that with our cleaning and televising, which they did reimburse us 90% um, for a portion of that and also this manhole inspection. There's 1,300 that we have to inspect, and quite frankly, we're running out of time. Right. So we, we can get about 20 to 25 done a day. We have a couple of inspectors that are doing that, in-house in staff that are doing that, and we've simply run out of time to get it done by the completion date. We need these done by the end of June so we can complete the final report and submit it. Wonderful. Um, any discussion? A roll call vote, please. Councilmember Burns? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Councilmember Rich? Yes. Councilmember Weiss? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. 
uh, 15E, I just wanted to briefly um, provide an update in terms of our um, library. For those of you that don't know, our library director, Brandon Bowman, has taken a position elsewhere and will be leaving us uh, by July 1st. Um, I wanted to express the administration support, obviously, of our library. Um, we're going to work diligently with the library board and with other members of the community to make sure that we fill this position with as good a person as Brandon. Mm -hmm. um, very sad loss for us, but it's a congratulations to him for furthering himself. And with that, that completes the city manager report for this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, city manager Tungate. Now we have call to the audience. Uh, please come up. Uh, give us your name and address and limit your comments to about three minutes. Hi, my name is Lisa LeBlanc. Uh, my address is 23837 Forest Street in Oak Park, 48237. <laughs> um, good evening, Mayor and uh, members of the City Council. Uh, as I stated, my name is Lisa LeBlanc and I'm a resident of Oak Park and a member of the Oakland Macomb County Chapter of Moms Demand Action. I'm here today to request that the City of Oak Park issue a proclamation, which I've brought with me, declaring June 1st, 2018, National Gun Violence Awareness Day, also known as Wear Orange Day. This request is being made to honor the over 36,000 people who are killed annually by guns in our country. 36,000. Gun deaths take many forms, including suicides, cases of domestic violence, accidental shootings, and homicides. Gun violence is now the third leading cause of death for American children. That's a statistic that I find startling, as I'm a parent myself. Wear Orange Day began after Hydea Pendleton, a 15-year-old honor student, was shot and killed after school in a Chicago park where she and her friends were sheltering from torrential rains. Just a few days earlier, she had performed with her school's marching band at President Obama's second inauguration. Hydea's friends decided that her death would not be in vain, and they started Wear Orange Day in her honor. They chose the color orange because it's bright, and it's a color that hunters wear to say, don't shoot me. <laughs> this tribute has grown into a national movement, which is now observed in communities across the United States. By proclaiming June 1st, 2018 as Wear Orange Day, our city would join hundreds of others across our nation, and many in our very own area, in bringing attention to these tragedies. Just this month, our neighbors in Pleasant Ridge, Huntington Woods, Southfield, Detroit, Royal Oak, Ferndale, and others have all proclaimed June 1st as Wear Orange Day. So I'm here to ask Mayor McCullen and members of council, will Oak Park, Oak Park join our neighbors in wearing orange on June 1st? I thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you for taking your time and your effort to champion this cause. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, come Council Member Burns. Thank you everyone for coming out and I just wanted to remind everyone about the flower sale that the Beautification Committee will be sponsoring on Sunday, June, May the 21st from 10 until 5 p.m. Please come out. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you. <laughs> They have a great vendor. The flowers are in wonderful condition. Everybody's always real pleased at the one if they come out out to the sale. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, everyone. Or is it my turn? Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate that. We do have a council meeting before June first. We do not. Um, do we, should we discuss that then before we leave today? I would like to discuss it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it, it is an important issue. Um, it's an issue that I'm passionate about. I think it would be a good signal to join our um, nearby communities in declaring June 1st is National Gun uh, Violence Prevention Day. So we have a motion. Awareness there. Day. Um, so I would like to make a motion that we, that we do that. Okay, is there a second? Actually, I don't think it's appropriate at this point in the meeting to bring a motion. I, I think it's, a, I think it's not, a, I think it's, it's up to the mayor. Yeah. It's up to the mayor. Okay. Um, so is there a second? The city clerk said it's okay. It's okay. Can do it. Mm -hmm. Second? Discussion or questions? Sure. Yes. Is a 
certain purview to what we can do as city council. And uh, there's certain roles that we play. And uh, statements on general issues that affect uh, our communities just isn't one of those. And um, perhaps there's other more appropriate ways to address this type of situation can you than think a vague of any? resolution. Can you think of any? Where, where's it going to end? Should we have a, should we have, that's what I'm saying, where's it going to end? Are we going to have 365 days of the year, some other day that we're going to be honoring, reflecting? I don't know, that's all. That's just my statement words. of value, I guess. A statement of value of the people. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the organization. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the organization stands for. Um, I, I, I really, I really don't. Are and we, so um, that's one of the reasons why it's not appropriate. Right. I think I sent, around a, um, I sent around an email about this. Uh, discussing the organization and the goals. Well, yes. you, did, well you didn't bring it up on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I, I understand where Councilmember Rich is coming from. I do think that this is a very large issue and it is an issue that directly affects our community. Um, I know two schools in our community were both put on lockdown, shutdown. M students missed school because of threats made. Um, and this is a national issue and crisis that we're dealing with right now. Um, I do think it's an appropriate uh, position for us to take that we are aware of the situation and that we're in support of um, doing everything that we can to prevent further tragedies from happening. Okay, ready to vote? No. Uh, if it, mm -hmm. Just one more thought. As long as I'm stepping on it, I might as well step out on mm -hmm. it. Um, pink ribbons, yellow ribbons, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, um, these type of symbolism things, I, I, I don't mean to demean the person who brought it up to us today. I thought her words and her expressions were heartfelt, but these empty gestures are just that. They're empty gestures. Um, they don't mean anything. These types of resolutions and so forth. So no, that's mm -hmm. just, I want to make that yes. statement. Thank you. I am aware of the gun violence situation. I just don't think it's appropriate to bring it up now than have us vote on it right now. Okay, so are you a no vote then? Yes. Okay, so we don't have enough to pass right now. Uh, maybe further down the lane. I think we still have to vote because we have a motion on the Still floor. have to vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Nay, there's not a majority. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming out. Um, enjoy the spring weather. There being no further business to come before this council, this meeting is adjourned. It's amazing.